And that is it. I'm not believing that for a second. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we are going to do an unboxing of the Chidi Q2 and the Chidi Box. We've known about Chidi for quite a while and actually got to meet the guys on their booth over at Form. Next, we went ahead and we've purchased a machine to review and give you guys the lowdown on. So yeah, stay tuned and we shall dive straight in. So I am going to pop it on the floor. So the first part I am greeted with is the Q2 Quick Start Guide. Buried right down in the box, there's some more boxes under the packaging so again just check for those i've got one mat tool or two mat toolbox toolbox one toolbox two while we've got it on its side we have the power supply two stepper motors and obviously a cover over the wiring there we have it i will crack open the quick start guide and we shall follow the steps to get it set up so first thing the next thing to do is install the display screen. So I shall do that first. And then I will get the screen. And again, inside that box, we've got a, a how to install that. It's also in the, the quick start manual as well. So look in the back there, we've got the little serial plug. So we shall proceed to plug that in. Okay, so we'll have that seated and then slide the display in the little slots and then pull it to the side to lock it in place. That's that fitted. Okay, so in here, clearly marked, we've got four screws. I'll take up the build plate for now. So in box one, we have Allen Keys spanner and a couple of spares, nozzle wiper and whatnot, spare fuse. There is some polystyrene underneath the bed, but it says wait for the platform to rise. Take out the foam pad from the platform. We'll do that when we power the machine on. Unlock the nozzle. Remove the paper box and foam cotton off the nozzle. So, we should grab some side cutters. We'll just proceed to carefully cut the cable ties that are securing all of this in place. We'll remove this tape from it while we're here. So here, we'll basically mount a little PTFE tube in there. And there is the spool holder. So this is obviously the configuration if you're gonna be printing without the chitty box. That appears to be all we need to do. We shall flip it back around now. You have got the other end of the PTFE tube here, which simply just press fits into the top of the extruder. And we'll open the door. We shall get our build plate ready. And again, the build plate, double-sided, flexi PEI textured build plate. The build plate size is 280 millimeters by 280 millimeters. So slightly larger than some of the other competition around this sort of price bracket. So the actual print volume is displayed here on the front of the actual built, the heated bed. So we've got 270 by 270 by 256. So I'm assuming the build plate size is 280 by 280, but the actual printable area of the build plate is 270 by 270 by 256 millimeters high. So that is fitted back in. We shall grab a power lead, which I've already got one plugged in somewhere. I'll pop that in the back and switch her on. Alive, it's alive. The build plate is described as 280 millimeters square. The print volume is 270 by 270 by 256. So obviously you've got five mil in around your build plate for the actual printable area on that. We're powered on. Everything is booted up and we shall now follow the steps through the setup process. So first thing it wants me to do is select the language. So we're English. Click next. Okay, right. If there is no box inside the unit, skip this step. Right, we haven't got a box inside the unit. We've got a separate unit so we can skip that step. Are you sure you want to skip the guidance? Confirm. Yes. And... Apparently, that is it. I'm not believing that for a second. Just off camera, we've basically connected the machine to the Wi-Fi and I have literally just completed an over-the-air firmware update. So I literally clicked on over-the-air update to check if there was any new firmware out before we proceed any further. There was. So that is installed. 
before we proceed any further, I think it's probably a good time to unbox Chitty Box, get all that hooked up, and then we can run our first print. So we shall commence. So I have had a, a little look at the actual unboxing guide for this. And what Chitty have done is provided the box with a, a riser. Which for anybody who's familiar with their Core XY machines with glass legs and AMS type or CFS units sat on top, a lot of people always print the riser. For me, it's definitely worthwhile, but it's nice to see that Chidi have included it in the box, which is a nice, a nice touch. There's cables and and everything packaged away. So when you are unboxing this just to make sure that you do check everywhere to make sure that you're not throwing anything away that could prove to be invaluable later on or riser pieces and we have got little slide events which is nice so we shall sit that on the top get our lid or remove the and then it has these little twisty locky levers and sure as eggs are eggs we can slide the top cover backwards and forwards open and close so plenty of ventilation so you shouldn't really have any issue at all printing with the lid on with pla because you can open to vent the chamber which is nice so looking at this um i would say this is our our buffer unit the next quick start guide to set up the the chidi box Assembling the riser like we have done. Basically orientate the riser. And then here are all of the diagrams that we require to actually get it all piped up. Pop that on there. And grab out my bags. So I've got four, four tubes at um, 750 millimetres long. And then I have another tube that is... 700 millimeters long with an additional pneumatic coupler flip it around what we want to do is with the four tubes we've got four outlets on the back so i will firstly pop those into each one the filament hole we fitted before we want to lift that up and remove that and replace it with said buffer basically it wants to go this way up so the tube that's fitted you take off and replace with the other tube that comes in the bag from the extruder you route through the hole of the riser you then use one of the little push fit fittings to basically secure it in said orientation the instructions aren't very clear on that but there's a little blown up image in the guide that shows passing through here so we've done that pop back on the lid stick the unit back on top so they just push into the oh, they just push into the bottom of the buffer like that and then the other end just plugs straight into the back of the buffer the next one plugs into the lower socket and then that plugs in down there power cable i'll spin it around plug it in and turn it on power we are loaded okay filament loaded uh the little light stays solid to say that it is loaded so just to check everything is working, I'm going to click on the benchy, the box is enabled, bed leveling is enabled, and I'm literally going to click print, see what happens. So PLA is on slot one, which is good to go. Press print. I do want to remove the polystyrene when it comes up. So now, get rid of the polystyrene. I'll go back over some of the points around construction or whatever for the machine. So the, the Z-axis is basically suspended on four smooth rods two on this side two on this side that is then driven by two lead screws by two independent stepper motors one on each side in the center of the bed the y-axis so front to back again is running on smooth rods with belt drives and the actual x-axis a linear rail mounted on a linear block bearing which the extruder is then attached to and obviously that again is also belt driven in your normal core xy configuration a couple of little bits and pieces i have noticed i do believe it's got a built-in camera i might even have a play around and see what the time lapse function is like to see 
see how that performs as well. The control interface is quite responsive. It's a nice, slim-looking screen. And on the side of the screen, just here, is your USB socket. There is no other USB ports. So it's quite nice to have it up here away because sometimes when they're sticking out the front of the machine, it's always a bit of a concern that if you catch it, you're going to snap it off in the port or else. And you, you don't want that to happen. We also have a filter in the back that the manual says that you can replace the standard filter with a, a HEPA filter for filtering out ABS fumes and whatever else. I'm not sure what is fitted in this. I haven't taken it out to look. But again, I will do and I'll confirm that when I conclude the video. We have the run-of-the-mill poop shoe, nozzle wiper and whatever else. The back of the build plate, there's a little silicon pad basically to brush any residue off the nozzle. Pretty much that is it. We will come back to you with all of our findings. So we will let the bench finish. We'll pull that off, give you a close-up of that and then I'll whisk the print away. I will slice a load of other files then we will report those findings back to you and we will wrap up the video there. One eternity later. <laughs> Here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. We shall conclude this video. Let us commence. After some extended testing of the uh, Chidi Q2, we are pleased to announce we have a hot air balloon. We wanted to really put the machine through its paces a little bit on this project because we haven't used one before. To give you guys at home the best possible advice available, we thought it would only be fair to create a larger project on it instead of the, the standard benchy or the small prints that we normally do out on the first initial unboxing review video. Needless to say, we have completed the whole project. And if anybody is interested in this file, we will leave a link in the description so you can go over to Colts, check it out. It's a guy who we work very close with, Fluvio who creates all of these STL files and models. They are really, really nice. This is actually a lamp, but we haven't fitted the electronics to it. But you can get the overall view. It is printed perfectly. A couple of things that we have learned along the way. We did initially start using the machine in Orca Slicer because that is our preferred go-to slicer. And what we found with Orca Slicer is when you're doing color changes, Orca Slicer profile hasn't got the retraction set correctly so it did lead to a couple of errors when it was trying to switch out the filament as soon as we swapped over to chili slicer the problem had gone but ultimately chili slicer is like a reskinned version of orca stroke prusa slicer anyway so it's got everything that you need it's very well tuned it connects to the machine via wi-fi flawlessly so you can remotely monitor on the same network and all of that good stuff the webcam works absolutely fine we did test out some of the time lapse fun functionality now it works perfectly okay it produces decent quality time lapses they're not going to be 4k resolution by any means you know but for ultimately you're using the camera to remotely monitor your prints time lapses are just a byproduct of that process really if you're going to set up professional time lapses you will need a dslr camera or something along those lines something definitely 4k ish but for the purpose that it's made for, you really can't complain. Me and Dan, the other technical bod, have both used the machine. Dan's feedback is very, very positive. He loves it. He feels, in his own opinion, that the colour changing capability is quicker on this machine than other machines that we have in the similar sort of setup. So whether that be the Ace Pro or the Creality CFS or whatever else. The other thing worth noting is I like the way that they've designed the box. The box does not allow you to manually pull the filament out. Well, through our experience dealing with customer feedback and support and whatever else, the biggest problem that we currently have is newbies into the hobby or industry or whatever don't know. Basically, just pull the filament out. Now, if you do that, what can happen is at the end of the filament, where it's still hot and you've got the, the little drippy bit on the end of your spool, that gets left behind in the extruder in some cases. In other cases, it gets stuck in the buffer. Or in worst cases, it gets stuck in the actual mechanism in the CFS unit or the Ace Pro, which then leads to a clog, which has to be stripped down, cleaned out, and whatever else. Then you can get up and print it again. You can't do that with this machine. You have to manually remove the filament via the control UI or the slicer. So I like that torch. It's a little thing, but it helps because it retracts it and unloads it correctly, and you load in the new filament in 
correctly. So that's a good plus. The other things that we've already commented on earlier on, they have thought about the design of this machine. I don't care what anybody says. You can all slate me in the comments if you want, and I will challenge each and every one of you individually. They have put some thought into this. The riser, the way that the glass lid slides back, the little things that they've implemented on the design of this machine are going to alleviate all the issues that a lot of other manufacturers have with their machines, i.e. remove the lid and all of that stuff when printed with PLA or PETG. Just the fact that they've supplied this really, really simple vented riser, that little locking levers and the glass is even recessed to allow it to slide back to a certain point and stop is simple, but very, very effective and very, very welcome. So I think that will conclude this general overview and first thoughts impression of the Q2. Now, just to let you know, we will be doing more testing with it and we are planning on getting the, the Chidi Max with a polar polar cooler and whatever else. For those of you who don't know what a polar cooler is, please do not forget to like, subscribe and share our channel. That way you won't miss any future updates because for me, I haven't seen a machine yet that uses this technology. I saw it at Form Next. I was very impressed. I did a little bit of research on the actual principles behind it after I returned from Formnex, and I can tell you it is a step up, especially in the cooling game. Polar Cooler gives the game away, or is a hint anyway. I'm not going to say much more than that, but please do stay tuned, and we will get a video on that out as soon as we have that unit in. But yeah, if you've got any questions about this, or you would like to know anything else about it that we haven't covered in the video please do drop it in the comments box below and we will do our best to answer you as quickly as possible but for me that is it kitty we're out see you on the next one bye-bye for now as always we aim to have the most competitive 3d printer prices on the market if you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price also if you're watching from outside the uk Check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.